Okay, we're ready to begin. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the October 25th, 2018 uh, regular meeting of the Village Board of Trustees. If you would stand with me, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Al, if you would lead us, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our uh, first order of business this evening will be public comment. If anyone would like to address the board, please feel free to come to the podium and uh, we would love to hear what you have to say. Peter Elder, 59 Dunning Avenue. So we are uh, doing the Trick or Treat Trail this Saturday, and I want to thank my wife for doing a lot of the work um, that I was supposed to do. Um, but she, um, between the two of us, we pretty much have a pretty close to a record, if not the record, number of merchants. We're up to about 53 right now. Um, so I would encourage anyone out there um, to come out. Um, I know there's a forecast of a little bit of rain. Um, but don't let that keep you away. It never does. We like to have kids there and we let kids come out even when it is raining. So um, we've been posting, uh, you'll know that a merchant is participating because they'll have the orange pumpkin on their window uh, or somewhere near their window, front door, something like that. And there's a lot of them out there right now. Um, and also some of them have been able to post monthly uh, little um, a doggy ween Halloween uh, poster I also put together. So um, if you are interested, um, dogs can stand the rain. They're, they're okay. Um, so if you want to bring your dog out and dress it up, at, um, we're meeting at 12.30 um, between the Village Hall and the bookstore. And I've got um, my son uh, is helping me, maybe his girlfriend, I don't know. And the three of us will be making sure that your dogs are safe and everybody's safe as we march the dogs down, down the road and down North Avenue to the park. And we're awarding prizes for first, second, and third prizes for the best costume dogs. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's um, there's a lot going on though. Just so everybody knows, there's not only the costume contest at the village, there's a trick or treat trail, obviously through the village. Jake's got the wagon all ready um, to go. The streets are closed from roughly Corning Park to Kircher Park on Main Street, and of course, yep, they they do leave traffic go on. North and South Avenues there at the Four Corners, but we do have the special police there, so I want to thank them for their help and crossing, getting people across, because especially if it's at all a good day, there'll be tons of people trying to cross the road, so it's really good. Um, also, the museum is um, doing, uh, doing a Halloween uh, display down there, so you're uh, great to do that, and I believe the fire department is uh, doing something as well. So there's a lot to do. Um, I encourage you to come out. It certainly could take a good hour, hour and a half, two hours to walk around the village and go all the way up to Kittleburgers. Um, first time this year, just so the board knows, we actually have new businesses on South Avenue and never had a South Avenue presence really, but we do have it this year. So don't forget when you're at Barry's to turn to the right, not just the left, because there are businesses down there that are looking to, to see you as well. So we've got a lot going on. And Jake has been, Jake and I put together a great uh, map of stops and routes, and hopefully it'll work out real well. And Jake's also volunteered to test most of the candy out before we pass oh, it out. Yes. Well, that's excellent, Jake. Thank you. I think it's important. We need to make sure everybody's safe. It's an important public service. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so um, I encourage everybody to come. I know a lot of you are going to be there on Saturday helping out in front of Village Hall or whatever, but um, it's a great time. Um, like I said, even if it's drizzly, don't be afraid to, to come out. Okay? All right, thank you. I want to thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. For all the work that you guys have put in for us. Oh, so thank no you problem. Very we enjoy doing it. This is uh, my 13th year. So, well, I know. You know. So it becomes sort of an issue of I have a database, I print it out, we go to all the businesses, see who's re upping, who's not. And, and, um, and then. But you guys have to do yourself. The too. merchants have been incredibly generous with their prizes they as have. well. They have. It's, it's been good. like Christmas in the office. <laughs> yeah. Office yeah. staff is. Yeah. Uh, We've been very excited in <laughs> testing yeah. out the toys. The, did you actually test out the toys? So he's testing oh, out the candy, you're that. testing out the candy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Flashlights. First prize, we're not going to give it away, right? First prize is a great first prize. So I, yeah. so don't, don't, you know, you got some great prizes out there. 
That was a good color choice for sure tonight for this presentation. I meant it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tie well. tie. Yeah. yeah, the tie too. Yeah. Tie too. Also, the dog contest prizes are also very good. Yes, they turn out to be great. Yeah. They're not just for the dogs anymore. They're also for um. Yeah. Where will the uh, maps be in terms of? Uh, We've actually never handed those out, Jake. Do you want to? Do you think we could hand up, we could keep some of those at the table at your Village Hall? Is that right? Well, we talked about having one available for people to look at to get a general idea. Um, it's subject to change, on, depending <laughs> on the amount of traffic in that one. Right. One that we yes. talked about going down uh, behind on the, on the north side of East Main Street, mm -hmm. cutting down near, near uh, the Village Bakery, uh -huh. and cutting around there with that wagon, and depending on the number of vehicles that are in that back area that might not make it through there wonderfully. Um, so if that's the case, the alternate route is going to be going down East Main Street and turning. North. We could put those at the table where you guys will be with candy too. Yeah, if you want to. Well, that's what we've I never mean. we've never really done a route map, and that was because Jake said to me, "Why don't why don't we put, why don't we look at the mapping the route?" So I'm like, "Okay, so we wrap the map the route." Um, yeah, it'd be great. We will have I, I do put together two signs, um, and I will have those on easels at some place on East Main Street and West Main Street mm -hmm. to, to show the participating businesses. And I didn't talk to you guys about it, but if you're okay, I'd like to bring in one for here. Yeah. Okay, all right, because it's already printed, right? Yeah, no problem. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you for the business for the talk. Thank you. That's interesting participating. We even got the pickled paintbrush. Yes. Yeah, two new ones, two really new ones. So new that they're, the buildings are not even, the businesses aren't even done yet, but they're still participating. That's down by number one, right? Yep. It looks great on the outside right now. Looks yeah. Good. Yep. Okay, uh, Jake, when did the roads close? Uh, 10? Yeah, about between 10 and 10 30, they're going to start to shut them down, I think, so a little bit of time. But we'll get yeah, the barricades out there now and things. The bid, bid typically will be the ones that uh, put them out. Um, we're going to do that and work the carts and vehicles across any certain locations as well. Uh, the um, business uh, owners did, however, uh, try to stress that the um, businesses will be participating from 12 noon until 3 o'clock. That's right. So basically 11.30, things will be happening in here uh, with the uh, judging the costume contest and all of that. But um, please uh, try not to go into the businesses uh, before noon. They would appreciate that. A uh, number, number of them ran out last year very quickly. People started really early. So. We didn't run out. We didn't run out. No, we did not. Well, we can come to Village Hall. Would you guys go through like 1,200 pieces, something like that? Yeah, I think so. We started cutting in half. <laughs> <laughs> Jake ate the other half. I think we only gave out 800 in the other 400. Were yeah. Somewhere down the stairs. I have to, I have to say that uh, trick or treat in, in the village, the actual Halloween evening is uh, Fun. pretty exciting, at least on our, our street. Yes. And the core of the village streets, I mean, we have nearly 400 kids come oh, to yeah. our house. And it's really neat to be out in the street and watch all this at that point. It's actually supposed to be in the 50s. Great, uh, great village turnout yeah. and, uh, so and surrounding area. They so all bring by bus. bus. <laughs> oh, they do. Yes. We have a party on the porch. Yeah, we do. So, Peter, what is the thought about, so if this does get rained out really bad, would it make sense for next year to move it a weekend ahead and then use the, the weekend before Halloween as a rain day? We could. We've just, never... Just a thought. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Because... <laughs> From what I'm seeing, it says 90 percent. Yeah. Rainy by this. Month. Yeah, we could certainly. But it just gives us a next uh, another option. Yep. Yeah. 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 We've all we've mm -hmm. just because we've always held it to Saturday before doesn't right. mean we have to. Right. So. I'm, I just hate to see it not a good turnout because it's been great. Yeah. Yeah. Just a thought. Yep. No, it's a good it's a good thought. Yep. So boots and raincoats. Right. And umbrellas. So. Yeah. 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 Mary Poppins. <laughs> um, anyone else like to uh, address the board this evening? And then we will close the public comment.
portion of the meeting, and uh, we will move on to uh, village board business. I think before we do that, I would like to make just a general uh, comment in light of um, things that are uh, certainly um, in the news the last couple of days, and that is that um, I appreciate uh, the um, opportunity to have dialogue. Uh, I know that there are opinions and there are um, ideas that are contrary uh, to mine, to others that are on the board, the board with me, and certainly with those that are in the village, but um, uh, I think that it is totally inappropriate and wrong for anyone to have done what is now in the news with the pipe bombs. I think that sitting down and talking reasonably um, and uh, coming to, um, you know, a, uh, whether it's a compromise or whatever it is, uh, whatever is best for the village is what we're interested in. So uh, we are open for um, discussion. We're open for comments. We are open um, for ideas, whatever it is that we can do that is in the best interest of the village residents. So I leave it with that, and we move now to um, village board business. First would be uh, to approve the uh, minutes from the October 11th meeting. Um, I was not here, but I had the opportunity to uh, watch the meeting in its entirety. So I need to ask if anyone uh, has any uh, additions to what has been written. Um, if not, then I would ask for a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make that motion. Oh, second. Trustee Lansing? Aye. Trustee Wilkie? Aye. Um, sorry. Trustee Ippolito? Aye. Okay. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Mayor Bay. And uh, having watched the meeting, I would say aye. Motion passed. Nice job, Jerry. Thank you, sir. There were a lot of very positive comments. <laughs> there were. <laughs> Those were out of state now. They were oh, I got to hear about them. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have uh, some budget modifications and transfers uh, to take a look at. And um, they are from line 01000909000, the fund balance, uh, $65,000 to line 01011930-001, Judgments and Claims, uh, Con Suit 2019, $65,000. This is the final settlement payment on the Con lawsuit that was not budgeted for, and so the money will be coming out of the um, unrestricted fund balance. Uh, total of all revenues of the general fund recognized or reasonably expected to be recognized in the current fiscal year, including unappropriated and unreserved fund balance, exceeds the total of all revenues of the general fund as estimated in the budget, including appropriated fund balance. So I can have a motion to uh, approve this transfer and payment. Well, just the transfer, actually. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Trustee Abolito? Aye. Trustee Belkey? Aye. Trustee Lancy? Aye. Mayor Bites? Aye. Motion passes. <coughs> well, that is, uh, that should uh, be final as we uh, move to approve the um, uh, vouchers for payment. Uh, that is included in them uh, for payment. And that should take care of the, what remains in terms of the uh, lawsuit. Um, that is uh, because, and in, in, in most of you are aware, uh, looking at um, an alternative site for septage, uh, it would have cost more than $100,000 difference from setting it up at the treatment plant. So uh, we are looking as part of the um, bond and part of the um, submitted um, water, uh, wastewater treatment um, plan for upgrading um, our system, uh, that was part of, a holding tank was part of the proposal, so it was part of what we would look to bond, 
and um, what we need to do is simply put a housing over that, and that will meet the expectations and the requirements of the lawsuit. So we are looking to move forward to do that. Uh, moving on, number three, resolution to approve the claims and warrants. Um, I had an opportunity to look them over. I think I had a couple of questions um, regarding them. One of them being <coughs> the amount of money spent on water in Vet Park. Um, we had $771 water bill for Veterans Park. Um, is that strictly Veterans Park? I, that was Chris, yeah, Chris brought that up to me. Um, <coughs> and we looked back and we're going to look at the old bills for the previous year. <coughs> and well, this year was a lot drier than last year. So I don't know if we. It was high in the same quarter last year. But because it was much drier this year, that would be the reason <coughs> why it would be. Uh, do we have an automated system that comes on here regardless, uh, or can we adjust that? What happens? Why is we set there, you can set the time and set a schedule for it, but it doesn't uh, doesn't read uh, moisture right. in the ground. We don't have that sophisticated a system that will right. tell it whether it needs to go on or not. It just says that it's you know, <coughs> in the morning on Tuesday it's going on, yeah. so whatever the schedule is. <coughs> We have an ability to adjust that schedule. That's what I guess I would. Have oh yeah. I mean, yeah. if it's if, if it's set to go daily or every other day and it rains for three days, we would not want it to go on. So I don't know. If we're looking at that, it just seems very hot yeah. for that plot of land, seven hundred seventy million dollars. I wanted my yeah. yard, and uh, I don't have that kind of ability. Yeah. Just uh, bring that up, okay? Um, the other is. Um, it, it's amazing to me, I just want to bring this to, to the attention, it's amazing to me that for $9 worth of parts, um, three bolts, some pads, a bolt, <coughs> something or other, and a flat washer, um, and sharpening blades, two sets of blades, it took four hours to do that at $75 an hour, $300 of labor for $9 worth of parts. <laughs> that to me is pretty amazing. But anyways, I'm not involved, but I'm just bringing it out to yeah, you. I'm driving up to your house next time. <laughs> That's okay. If you got a quick ring into it, that'd be great. It'd be great, great if we had maybe a technical back. Yeah. Um, is the sweeper still under re under warranty? No. No, the sweeper's about five years old, five or six years old. So we had only a warranty for... Probably one or two years. Yeah, yeah, it was two. Yeah, probably two. Yeah, yeah we, this was uh, an accumulation of some... Um, Things that we wanted to get addressed on the sweeper, and some things that it started having some heating issues. They've got a real tight uh, neck in between the cooler, the water cooler, and the hydraulic fluid coolers. Um, they were able to you know, disconnect those and pull those apart and get that cleaned in there. Um, we did not replace um, <coughs> the suction tube in there that would add some cost to it, but I said, No, we can get another year out of that. Uh, that's something we're going to have to plan on. but. Um, which is, you know, it's kind of a wear part there, so. No, I just asked about the warranty. Yeah. Thank you. That was it for me. Jerry? Or anyone else? I have nothing, sir. If there are no other comments uh, or questions, then I would ask for a motion to approve the claims and warrants the table. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Trustee Alito? Aye. Trustee Lindsay? Aye. Trustee Belkane? Aye. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Mayor Byers? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, the next item is uh, financial statements. You have them for September. You can take a look at them. Um, I would um, love to retrieve. There are very few that are approaching their limit already. But, uh, and I understand why some of them, yeah. but um, I think we are at the moment in pretty good shape uh, as we are moving through the year. Uh, still a couple months to go, to half, half year. So. Uh, next item is uh, taking a look here at um, the tree easements. And uh, Jake, can you... Um, 
bring me up. Were you able to talk with, um, with Brian, the gentleman that you have not yet talked to? Yes, then this I actually was able to. I saw the garage door open this afternoon, so um, I'm not I, I was to catch up with Dennis, and he is he is interested. Um, he's at the 190. The other um, family at 180 and 184. And they're all basically all three are interested in exploring that uh, that easement. So we're all on board with that. So that would take it to the board. And, Um, then, I guess I'm approaching this asking uh, your, um, you want to call it permission to enter into these easements uh, with these three residents, um, we can meet and we can do that. Um, the easements are at 180 South Avenue, uh, Carol and Joanne Blanchard. At 184 South Avenue, um, it would be between James Scott and the village. And the third is Dennis and Karen Slicker, um, located at 190 South Avenue. Uh, we will be entering into an agreement with them, an easement, and agreement to maintain the streets. So, um, I guess uh, I would ask for a motion to authorize um, myself to sign these tree easements and maintenance agreements on these three properties on South Avenue. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. The dollars. So there never was an easement there? No, not for the Why it just right there? <coughs> well, there's not a long in that corridor. There was a question about a tree there. It started with a question about a tree from a resident. I went out there and and we looked in our tree program and said, you know, these aren't our trees. And they, you know, they informed me that when they bought the house, they were told they were our trees and that they were told by the village previously that they couldn't do anything with the trees because they were village trees. Um, so I said, I don't have any record of that, but if, you know, if that's what you're told, obviously we want to be able to work with you on the way to be able to have us be able to work on these trees because they do serve a public purpose by, you know, shading your sidewalk and providing protection and aesthetics for that area. And so we can look at doing the easement and that gives us the ability to be able to have the property to take care of them or, you know, those go down, plant new ones or, you know, and, and have that forever now to be able to keep trees along the road. So, so we have that existing all the way down the rest of well, the rest of them are all in the public right away. Right? So the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest of them are all where, where the street is. And these, okay. for some reason, fell outside, even though they look like they should be in the public <laughs> right away. The right away is a little funky in places. Yeah. And I mean, we have outside. Of, we had the same thing on West Main Street. Yes. Yeah. And we have, and I don't know if there's an agreement. Um, one is in front of the house, two doors down, uh, in the Maple. And we also have uh, one that is across the street and one next door to us on Elm, which are Elms, but they were not put by the street. They were put into the property owner's property. Uh, but they were done by the, by the village. And I don't know if there are easements to those now or not, but they were put in by the village request. Yeah. And but they were put in that too well. What would the right of way, like on Elm Street, be from Santa Elm? Typically, typically there's a 50 foot right away in our streets. The state has about 66 foot wide right away. Our streets are typically 50. Some of them are 40. Um, but so, you know, and it's from the side it of the right the front yard. Where it was laid out, depending on where it goes. Yeah. Usually in the old village or in the area, it's, you know, just behind the sidewalk. Um, ideally, if you remember North Ave Project, sometimes over the last 100 years, the sidewalk kind of wandered out of the right away, and that was part of that effort. was getting those back in to within the right of way. Um, so, um, but yeah, it's usually, you know, like on South Avenue and here at 66 foot right wide from where the center line originally was. Um, that doesn't, in the last hundred years, do that doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily the same spot either. So, <laughs> What's done again? 
I do 50 of these, but I've got a chart in the back. 50. They're all, they're all, no, it's going to dip right there. Yeah. Any further discussion? Good. Then I would entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. Oh, actually, I, I think we already did. We're done. Then we just need to. So. Trustee Oh, yeah. Trustee Lauer? Aye. Trustee Ippolito? Aye. Trustee Lansing? Aye. Mayor Byers? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next, we are looking at a discussion uh, regarding the planning board recommendation, a positive recommendation to the board regarding um, the quote unquote um, letter of credit. Issue that asks for Britain Wood. And I guess I would ask uh, if there's anything new that has come to you. Um, I know the planning board has not met, so. Uh, well, the planning board. I know the lady was out of town also, the um, attorney for. You know. <coughs> well, I had a couple of conference calls this week with the attorney for Lakeshore Savings Bank and also with Scott Sedona, the attorney for Mr. Van Epps. And um, um, there, and she drafted a, what, what we're calling a funding agreement. And there's, there's one paragraph that I objected to. I suggested some other language. She was going to take it back to whomever the powers that be to the bank is to see if they were okay with it, and I haven't heard. But the objectionable sentence is that it's, if at any time the lender is not comfortable with the status of the project, the lender may apply the entire balance of the infrastructure loan. Mm -hmm. And that's, where, that's the money that's going to be set aside, the $1.1 million to do the infrastructure to reduce the principal and interest outstanding on the loan. And this funding agreement shall terminate. Well, I said, well, I don't know what, you know, so what are the standards that the bank's not comfortable? It's pretty nebulous to me. So I suggested that we add, if, if at any time the lender is not comfortable with the status of the project, upon the written consent of the village, which consent will not be unreasonably withheld, the lender may apply the entire balance. So basically, if the village agrees, that, because who knows, nobody's got a crystal ball. Like if it's at the very tail end of the project and there's minor things that aren't done or whatever, you know, maybe it'll be okay to not finish it, but I don't know. But to let them just be able to pull the plug on it whenever they want, I couldn't recommend that. So I haven't heard if the bank will agree to the, add the, the consent of the village you know, to that. They had other language. Well, before they they weren't going to disperse any of the money to the village. So long, well, if Mr. Van Epps was in default under the <coughs> underlying uh, construction loans, well, I said I can't envision a, a circumstance where he's not doing the the construction anymore, and he's not in default. So that means you're never going to disperse the money. So she took that out. So basically it says, it, it'll, you know, first of all, the, the bank will set aside this money, in essence, into an escrow account. And then if Van Epps doesn't, you know, doesn't take any action in completing the, prop, the infrastructure for a period of 90 days, the village can put him and the bank on notice that you got 60 days to recommence. And if they don't do it within the 60 days, then the the village can have access to the money to hire a contractor to do the work. Mm -hmm. So that's essentially how it how it's going to work, which I'm okay with that. But it was just these. Now it's down to that one paragraph. But like, as long as it's a mutual decision of both the village and the bank to forego it, then fine. But I, I didn't. They can't just unilaterally. Otherwise, I'd tell the guy, look, well, just get a performance bond, and it'll cost him like $100,000, and you don't have to mess around with stuff like this. But, so, 
I was hopeful. I was hopeful to hear back from her uh, today, and I didn't because he wants to get on. This, if we can agree to this language, he wants to get on the next agenda for this board to seek approval of. Because that's the only thing that's preventing him from closing on the construction loan and actually starting some work. Mm -hmm. And he'd like to start before the weather gets really bad. That's a while yet. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're in March. So that's, that's, so that's where it's at. And the second uh, phase, third phase. In fact, I'll tell you, why don't you... Yeah, you, I hand wrote what I asked, but if, yeah. if you want to circulate yes. back to the other board members, yeah. you know, scan it and email it to everybody. Uh, I'll just scan it and email it to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> okay. I think that, I think you got to also, there. send it to, to um, Jake and Will also so they can look at it. <coughs> Well, certainly would like to uh, have that project in camp. So would Mr. Van Epps. Yeah, I'm sure he would. But if he, if he didn't choose a savings bank, he'd be, he'd, he'd be doing this already because he, they would've, he would've got a letter of credit. Well, they were ready to go last May. The ESL was ready to go, but yes. he had some, he didn't feel comfortable with Whoever the person at ESNL, the person that was going to authorize the draws, he had some, he just wasn't comfortable that they were going to timely authorize the draws. So he pulled the plug in on ESL. Okay. Well, I'll okay. Uh, moving on. Um, next, we have a discussion on <coughs> possible accounting software. Um, we have been. <coughs> using Harris uh, accounting programs and uh, modules for as long as I have been um, involved in the village and I'm sure prior to that for quite a while. And uh, it has been an ongoing um, desire to uh, move to something that uh, is maybe more easily used. Um, and uh, I believe that uh, the office staff has done a number of number of um, visitations as well as calls looking at various programs. So if you would like to uh, discuss that, bring that to our attention and uh, let us know your uh, feelings on this and uh, what you have found uh, at future approval. So as we discussed at the last meeting, we went, uh, Chris and I and Joe have been um, taking to move to a different um, accounting software, something that will save us time and actually a little a little bit of money down the road. Um, we found a company, last time we talked, there was a few companies that we were talking to. Now we've narrowed it down to AccuFund. Um, unfortunately though, we would have to come up with half of the money now instead of in the next budget, which was what we you know, had originally talked about. Um, <clears throat> we would still like to move forward with it. We, Chris was able to work with um, Jake to find the money we need. We'd still like to move forward with it um, so that we can start in January. Instead of having, if we waited until the next budget, we would have to wait until June, which is a very crazy time for us, um, end of fiscal year. And so, Chris, would you talk about the, the cost savings? Yeah. Currently, the total cost of the project, the software, installation, and startup, pretty much, would be $50,468. An amount that will be capitalized, obviously, over 20 years is usually the time frame that it's capitalized over. Um, if the board is so kind as to agree to such a project, the initial sign-up, once, once someone signs the engagement letter, we would be expected to pay $26,620.50 in order for the project to begin. Um, we would be saving 
roughly seven and a half thousand dollars just because we'll not be using Harris anymore. Harris's um, annual maintenance charges are ten thousand dollars. This company's is two and a half thousand um, dollars. This fifty thousand dollars is buying the program outright um, with three users. So we're buying the licenses. There's no annual renewal fee um, involved with that. Um, the programs are in the 21st century. They're not as antiquated as Harris is. Um, it's easier to run various different reports. In the current program we have, if I want to look at just one account over a period of time, I have to run six different reports. Whereas with this, I could choose, okay, I need account 55, 74, and 85, and it'll do one report with all those accounts for me. Um, it's just a, a better program, I believe. Um, the other savings that we would have would be also about $7,000 from having payroll in-house as opposed to using paychecks, um, which, which is kind of why we want to start, one of the reasons we want to start in January. Having um, payroll start on the first day of a new year um, is very advantageous for the employees and for us as, as, as staff. Um, if we wait and, and the board doesn't approve this, we can of course start in January of 2020. Um, the reason we don't want to start in the beginning of our fiscal year is because, as Heather mentioned, taxes are begin in June, the year ends in May, um, and the audit starts in July. So there's just too many things going on for anyone to have time to try to learn the new program at that time. So we'd really like to go with it as quickly as possible, but we completely understand that there are financial issues that may hinder us from doing that at this time. We've used so, it for 20 years, what's another year? There is one thing though I will say. We we're anxious to get rid of, sorry, not get rid of, but move forward with the AccuFund in terms of payroll. We recently yeah. found a big error. Um, we're working through that right now. Um, something I feel that should have been caught on paychecks end. So it's, I just, I prefer, I would be more comfortable doing our payroll and our by ourselves. So well, that's how much, how much was it costing, it? Yeah, costing us between paychecks and Harris? Well, as she said, it was $7,000 as the savings <coughs> switching to AccuFund, which would take care of our payroll. So we would no longer use And the paychecks. other 75 So it would be $14,500 savings. That's cool. I mean, not right off the bat, obviously. It's over a period of time, but. Yeah. Right. And plus, we have the insurance that... And you're upgrading. Yes, absolutely. And, yeah. and we also have the surety that the information we're putting in, we know that it's right, whereas we're relying on paychecks, which no one would have thought to check this report that we found out is incorrect, which is another issue that we'll have to address. I'll have to... I'll be calling for a credit because... Um, What's, what we found out is something that should not have happened any, in any way, shape, or form, especially because we're talking about paychecks, not some ABC it's payroll true. company. Um, it's just an ongoing, is it ongoing or just a one time? It, it uh, reaches catch. far back as potentially two or three years. So it's an ongoing error. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, wow. and an error, a blatant error that should not have occurred because it just shouldn't have occurred. <laughs> there, were, there was mixing of days and dollars. How do you mix di days and dollars? You can't do that. And it's a, it, when you use a payroll company, you don't anticipate to have to check their work. You're, you're using them in paying for your service and, in, and hoping that... And they're supposedly a very well-respected, so... Yes, they you, are, but you had to I have an issue with that now, too, so... That's our case. And Jake found some money. Yes. And Jake found some money. Thank Surprisingly, you. right after we found candy. <laughs> 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 See, I knew how to strategize. <laughs> <laughs> that position. You know, a way to a man's heart. It does. It does happen. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I know. Whatever works. <laughs> I know. Well, so between now and uh, if we were to wait. Wait so that this was put in place in January 1st, 2020. You would like it in place January 1st, 2019. Correct. What would that 
save the village total? The road wouldn't save us anything. Well, yes, because you have tariffs and you have... Um, if the cost of this exceeds those yeah. savings right now. Yeah. 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 So you want to see it. So it's going to cost you 50 grand. It's going to you'll save 14,500. Do the subtraction. 41,000. Yes, but it's going to cost you yeah. the difference. Exactly. But then, and then their service fee is. If we wait till January 1, 2020, potentially the cost of this program will most likely go up about 5% minimum. We can negotiate that. Of course. With Jake in my corner, you can no negotiate anything. Um, what else do you need from him? <laughs> but additionally, not only will we um, have an increase in the cost of this program, but we will also have to pay Harris ten thousand dollars for another year of service. Right. Still all under the fifty. Yes. It's fifty-five, right? Yes. And what did they try to increase it? Uh, oh, last year or this this year? They, they tried, tried to, to increase it twenty-five. 40. 25 percent yeah. and i yeah. called i said you never told me you're going to increase it 25 percent i mean i budget six percent but not 25. yeah there was no more discussion they sent me a bill for exactly six percent more but i know i can expect a ten thousand dollar bill next year for a program yeah. that's just not at the up ten thousand dollars now we call only because it's a quirk in their program it's not our fault exactly. it's a quirk in their program <coughs> so the other thing I asked earlier, and uh, I think Chris is going to check tomorrow, is if we are and have any contract with paychecks. Yeah, I just, I'm i fairly certain we don't, but I right. will absolutely check for that. Because that also yeah. hinder the decision yeah. as well. So you're going to do the payroll tax reporting all that in-house? Yes, it's all. It's actually just a matter of filing the paperwork on, on a quarterly basis, which all it's all compiled together, and then we just make sure we, we do the the transfers and payments. On updates with that as well in payroll law. Just, just somebody like the treasurer is going to have to sign them. Understood. So if you screw them up, yeah. Guess who's it? You know, paychecks is signing them. Right. They're responsible. The liability is now on yeah. us. Right. So. Yep. That's a good point. But it would be easier to fix it if they can't have it with them through payday. Well, well and we're finding the errors that they're making yeah. right now. So. But that's still a big. Just one person inputting that information. Yep. It should be Christy. And to paychecks? Actually, Joe is the payroll yeah. person. Yeah. Joe oh, yeah. and. <laughs> but there's no system. In the new system. Well, we're all going to learn it, but Joe's still going to be the point person okay. to actually okay. process payroll. So it's, it's, it's important that just one person do that. It seems like so, right now. It's important one person do that, is what he said. Well, for the backup. Well, uh, yeah. there's always backup, so I know we, yes, when Joe's off, I'm the one that transfers mm -hmm. payroll. So in essence, um, yes. Megan enters the timesheets, and then I transfer the payroll. Um, if Megan, if um, Joe is out, and then I do the payroll entry, and then Heather transfers the money in the bank account. So it's checks and balances all the way around. Someone does a piece of the, the whole process. I like that part, yeah. the checks and balances part. I mean, there's going to be errors, you know. Yeah. We're human. If we weren't human, we would be the same, but we are, so. It won't become, uh, it won't be ongoing. Right. You catch a problem right away. Yes. If you would like to um, wait for the answer on paychecks, we could vote on it at the, the next meeting, at the, ten, at the 30th. That's a workshop. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I would, I would not like to vote today. I'd like to wait. Would you be open to voting? Like that. Uh, probably in that time frame. How much time do we need to set that. stuff up to start in January first? Yeah. Like Two right months here. is sufficient. You can't wait till a regular board meeting. Okay. Like the. But they're saying two months. <laughs> two months to get it all. How long does it take to get in place? Yeah. Pretty quick, right? My only, Not two months my only point is, is that when you're, you're going to spend $55,000, it should be at a public meeting where the public has some input into it, not at a workshop. That's not going to happen in a workshop. Well, that's what Heather was suggesting was to do yeah. it at a workshop. And that's a board saying. meeting, which is not yeah. a next workshop. Yeah, not I know she said. I know what she said. And we may need that money to fix this unit. 
So then this, um, this yeah. is this software system more important to you guys than this room that was your other no, it's a not. few meetings ago? No. This was a project that you thought of was these chairs and stuff. Which I thought. We can wait till 2020. No, I'm I'm just asking the question, is this this updating this room, does that bring, have the potential for any more revenue to the village? Um, versus spending the money on the system. I'm just asking the question. So I assume that we do that before we do this, correct? Right. Jake's got some serious look on his face right now. I was just wondering if that was candy wrappers around here. <laughs> <laughs> Figure out some off-line labor hours until 
Moving on to um, item, um, next item that is um, the item regarding the Historic Preservation Commission. I received an email uh, from Ed Atkinson, Chairman of the Board uh, of Historic Preservation Commission. And uh, in that email, he resigned his um, um, chairmanship. And I will read it to you. Doing, due to my recent deployment uh, by FEMA to assist in disaster recovery in the U.S. Virgin Islands, I am unable to perform my duties as chairperson for the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, I would expect this deployment to extend through the first quarter of 2019. Therefore, I resign my position as chairperson. Uh, however, I would like to remain as a member of the commission if acceptable. So his leadership position would like to step down from, but he would still like to remain on the committee. Um, and so uh, I uh, responded to him uh, accepting his resignation. And um, so I would like uh, this evening, um, he made a suggestion. I would like uh, to um, appoint Peter Elder, who is on the commission currently as the chairperson. He's been acting as the chairperson since Ed has been gone and um, is uh, well aware of what is going on uh, in terms of the commission and has uh, a deep interest in the uh, historic uh, nature of the village. So, um, that maintains the identity of the uh, Historic Preservation Commission as it is, it just changes the leadership uh, within. So I am appointing this evening uh, Peter Elder, if he will accept, I believe we've had a conversation and you are interested in accepting I will. Uh, the chairmanship of the Historic Preservation Commission. Thank you. Anything yes. to say? I'm honored. <laughs> Thank you. He's already been doing the meeting minutes and everything. Yeah. I don't know how long. Well, congratulations. So. Thank yeah. you. Good yeah. Fine job, sir. Uh, next, we move now to um, the different departments. And I would ask first, uh, Don, do you have uh, anything to bring other than uh, what you did report to us in regards to Brittany uh, Woods? Um, only, as you know, there's a, uh, an application was filed to uh, construct a small cell tower at Commercial and Martin Street. And um, I, I had a conversation with Mike Roberts at Cohen Law Group in Pittsburgh that drafted the, the proposed local law, which we need to get going on. This and uh, he said you can't not adapt a moratorium, it violates federal law because of the shot clock provisions that the federal regulations have. So this is going to go forward under the existing law, which is, is pretty um, nondescript as to what, act the, what the requirements are. It basically was drafted for satellite dishes and not really cell towers or even small cell towers. What Mike suggested, and maybe Jake wants to pass this along to Will, what other communities have done in the interim is to see if the applicant would voluntarily agree to comply with the new law, knowing that it's coming, so that you send him a copy of it. And he says, most all of them 
except for Verizon. And I don't know who is behind Mobileite is the actual is the actual applicant, but obviously the cell tower is for one of the four carriers, not Mobileite. But so I don't know who they are the agent of, but if it's anyone other than Verizon, he says the odds are that they'll cooperate and you know try to comply with what the law that is coming. Mm -hmm. So, but in the interim, you know his his advice, my advice is we really need to get going because generally these small cell applications come in bunches. The carriers don't just do one; they do yep. as many as they need yep. to. You know, so. Have you, um, have you and Will uh, had a conversation, a phone um, conversation again? I know that was being set up. Uh, I thought, anyway, the conference call um, on any of the questions. No, I, I, I haven't had any follow-up okay. with Will about that. Right. And I will follow up with Will. I believe that. But, you know, the, the, good, the, good, the good thing is, is that this application, you know, it's in the industrial zone, right? So it's. Mm -hmm. It's not that big deal. If this were an applicant that wanted to construct its own pole in one of the residential parts of the village, then we, you know, we'd be scrambling. Right? But uh, for your information, uh, Will did use a uh, matrix of uh, uh, what the new law would have, 16 different points, and their application was uh, deficient in nine of those 16. Nine out of the sixteen. Uh, so uh, it does uh, behoove us to move on this. Uh, but maybe they'll—I don't know if those men are, but maybe they'll voluntarily. <laughs> they might. To, You're right. They might to follow whatever those nine are. Mm -hmm. are. It's worth asking, anyhow. Right. And it does show that um, you know the applications certainly are. Sufficient in yeah. terms of what we would like to have. Right. right. Uh, it's, yeah, I I agree that we really got to get moving on this because once it starts, it's really like a wave through this village, oh, yeah. and that's the way they operate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if you grant one <coughs> tower at the corner of Commercial and <coughs> Martin Street. You know, and, and if maybe they'll agree to the, the law that's coming down. I don't know how big it's going to be. And, you know, and the, uh, the near future is going to have these little cell things in the backyard all over the place. And um, that ties in with the, with the two poles in every backyard in the village. <laughs> But it's just going to be messier, and, and once you once they get started, they they go, they go. Give them permission for one, and they'll they'll take advantage of that. Um, code enforcement, Jake, are you addressing any of that this evening? I was not aware that I was. But okay. Exactly. <laughs> And I think uh, the report we have, yeah, and that may be self-evident, these truths that are in it. Tell them to stay off the street. Lots of vehicles on lawns. And tell them to stay off the street. 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 It seems to be a new trend to park on the grass. That's going to hurt my next election. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he lives on Baker Street? Yeah, he does. <laughs> Getting all my neighbors mad at me. There's one in Pollock Street over there. Okay, then we'll move to uh, DPW. I have a, a couple things just to notify that the lead pickup is starting officially Monday. Now, we went out today and did it. You know, some test runs and some drive runs, but um, the leaves are not completely convinced, so it's time to drop yet. <laughs> um, North Avenue projects about done. We have had some correspondence with RGE the last couple of days. It seems like it might be going in a good direction to get up 
Um, they're kind of holding up um, one sidewalk section because there's a they, they have not moved a pole yet. Um, there's another pole that's leaning that they're going to secure. They came up and inspected today, said it was needs to be addressed, but it's safe. Um, and Is that the one leaning over? Yeah, that I notified them in June of 2017. Yeah. <coughs> yes. And then again in October of 2017. So, and then their overhead lights that are on down there. Um, I'm also working through the questions we had at a couple meetings ago. The company that supplied the um, fixtures does make one of the options on there is a house side shield. So I'm looking at talking to them again and maybe just getting four of those to start where there's concerns with them. Very often there's space in a spot where it's either in front of a business, but there are a few residential residential properties on there that might have a concern about light. I know when they've been done in Avenue years ago, it definitely changed the way the light it was on my house. And, you know, all of a sudden it was a cobra and now all of a sudden it's right outside my window. Um, so it would have been a nice option, that outside shield. So I'm looking to try and get four of those um, shields that we can install. And they said they can go in after the fact, so we should be able to do it. And then if we need to get more of them, or I want to see what they look like, because we might be able to make them cheaper than the 50 to $80, I think they are, for the shields. So um, we got a lot of talented people around, you know, even they're shopping in the area around here. So um, yeah, we might be able to make something work. And, oh, <coughs> this out there in trick or treat trail as well or have some signs up and some big ways but the pots it's got starting to do cold in the middle of 35 degrees the uh the um, potato vine there what is it called um sweet potato i can't think what yeah there was the sweet around. potato vine too much it? sugar um Picana, the yeah but the, 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 yeah the sweet potato starts to die off and yeah. it doesn't look great so Want to get those pots off the yeah. the planters off the street, but the cana that everybody was talking about that was in the middle of those high things, those are a ball. Um, I found some out about when I was down there too. Is that when they have seeds as well as bulbs? Yes. I thought they just said bulbs, but there's some seeds on there. Regardless, the next week uh, we're inviting people down to the sewage treatment plant to harvest the bulbs. Um, so they can go down there, bring a bag, bring a box. We're going to have a care sheet as well, saying what to do with them. Uh, but when we take them down, we put them down in the barn down there. That's where we store them. Um, so people can come down there and stop by the office. And there's information on the website as well. So uh, that would oh, be nice. There's been a lot of questions about them. And so it would be a good way to keep those going year after year. They can't, the, where we get them from doesn't have greenhouse space to start them themselves. And they're rather get them from a greenhouse. Or one of their suppliers is starting, but it would be nice people like them and my put them in their garbage and stuff. So. Yeah, because I used to have them, I just put them in sawdust yeah. and keep them in there for a time. Megan was able to shrink them, the two down for us, and <coughs> that's not a trick or treat trail as well. Yeah. That'll be on the table. You may want to laminate them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, jeez. I have to miss that's all I can do. I think that's a great idea, um, and I hope that people will take advantage of it. <coughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. also, it's not just for yeah. village, it's for everybody. Right. Okay. Sure. Except contract. Yeah. You might as well put that out there. Uh, it's like the leaf ball yes. the town, right? So, uh, <coughs> I do invite the public to come. It will take a little bit of effort to keep them over the winter, but it will be worth it next year, for sure. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. All right. Uh, Seward, are we doing well there? Uh, we had a repair on the uh, trickling filter, I believe. And that is now okay. It should be. There was a repair on the, on the center cube. Um, that's actually dries the slope. Thank you. Um, and they're back, I believe they're done with that now. Um, but that was a, that's a company, I think they have to come from New Jersey, yes. I remember, I can't remember 
Yeah, there it's it is um, that's where they come from to repair it. And there was two tiles, and over a couple of budget years, I think they bought the tiles for the screens, and then we had all the parts, and then the people came and, and put it. And then after they put it together, there was a slight vibration, so I think they had to come back or a vibration. And then I don't think it spends about nine thousand odd pounds to get. We had a <coughs> polymer, and then it kind of spins out, breaks down the water, the surface tension of the water, so it'll separate out from the sludge and dry it out. Um, and then cook. that's what we could end up taking down the all the way down. So. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. we're looking at the new washer, and that's only listed at about 900 out there. Yeah. So, oh, and that thing was a spin cycle of those things, so. Yeah. And this is about as fast as a router, I think, right there? The whole thing? <laughs> or a wood working <laughs> router, they go about 9,000 RPMs. Yeah. That's a lot of weight spinning around really fast. Yeah. 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 Uh, anything else that anybody has that they would like to bring up? If anybody is throwing away or going through their closets for old clothes, coats, oh, shirts, sho shoes, uh, anything along those lines, um, you can <coughs> put them into bags and bring them to Village Hall. And uh, my granddaughter is looking for bags of clothing to go to Savers and will help pay for a mission trip to El Salvador. So if you're throwing things away, uh, by November 1st next week, if you have anything you would like to donate, you can bring it in and I will ask the staff to put it into the mayor's office and, um, <laughs> and pick it up. I don't know if I can do that, but we'll try it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I would it like might, to might make violate some like separation of church and state kind of thing. But it might, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> okay. I'll, hear, I'll hear about it. <laughs> uh, one last thing that I would like to uh, make a special mention about, and this is uh, to all of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, you are invited. Uh, to represent the village and also I would make this known to those who are residents on Thursday November 29th uh, there will be a veterans recognition event that will take place at Cottrell Warner American Legion Post 942 uh, 818 Ridge Road uh, in Webster it will be from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock and um, the uh, information is to join us. We salute this year's nominees for the New York State Senate Veterans Hall <coughs> of Fame and honor their service and sacrifice on behalf of our freedom and way of life. And um, she would, uh, this is uh, an invitation from Senator Pam Helming. And she would like to give opportunity to invite friends, family to this special day as we recognize veterans and celebrate Veterans Day. That would be on Thursday. November 29th. Um, there is an RSVP uh, if you have an intention of going. Uh, and those of you on the board, if any of you are interested in going, please see me. Uh, let me know and uh, I will let them know by November 9th. Okay. November 9th. Okay. I think that's a great, uh, a great thing. Uh, recognizing it's a uh, hall, of, I hadn't heard of it, the Senate, uh, Senate Veterans Hall of Fame mm -hmm. for um, uh, service, uh, service men and women. Uh, just had an opportunity to go to uh, Washington, uh, D.C., that's where I was at the last meeting, and I uh, had an opportunity to go to the Veterans uh, Memorial um, on the mall, both the um, uh, Vietnam Memorial as well as the Korean, unbelievable, the Korean Memorial. Yeah. And um, also, of course, the ones for the World War II Pacific and Atlantic uh, mm -hmm. campaign. So quite a, quite a moving experience, to, uh, especially to go to the wall, to walk, to walk past the wall as well as uh, in the Korean uh, area. So um, if any of you are interested, let me know. Okay. Also, uh, there is a um, meeting 
a community meet the community for um, elected officials. Ken Helming will also be there on Monday night at the library from 7 to 8 o'clock. Um, they have had several of these sponsored uh, by, I believe, the town, but um, an opportunity for uh, the residents to come in to meet with elected officials and then um, uh, just to have a, a discussion. And that is on Monday night, the next one. I believe they've had several, but uh, just would make that uh, known to you uh, if you are interested in going. That is uh, from 7, seven to 8 o'clock at the library. All right, uh, if there's nothing else, then I thank everyone for coming. I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. It is now 8.12, I believe. I'll make that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carrie, thank you for coming. And uh, drive carefully and drive safely. Take it off the old metal writer. <laughs> right? That's a pretty tight plan. I wanted to see if I could get that on the floor. Yeah. I wanted to see if I could get that on the floor. It's Well, that was pretty good. Yeah. So, Jake, he dropped Heather out of the ring. Blue like that sign over there, Jake. What's that? Monroe County, water blue. <laughs> yeah, I just...